My name is Norman Blewinsod, and I am directing The Magic Fire by Lillian Grog. What is your greatest strength as a director? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not sure I have one. I, I would say in some respects it's um, finding interesting plays. I think it's sometimes it's directing actors and try to get them to be moment to moment truthful. Sometimes hopefully I, I have a strong visual sense. Other times I don't think I do. What is this play about? It's about these this Viennese and Italian family that leave Europe at the end of World War II, escaping one dictator, arriving in Argentina in the summer that Eva Perón dies. And they're sort of like reliving the whole thing. The Magic Fire, the, the title comes from Wagner's De Valkyrie, where Wotan, once uh, Brunhilde has become human, puts her in a magic fire to protect her. And the only person who can get through the magic fire is a true hero. So the family, because the family is very into, into what you would call classical music, they kind of use music as like a, a, a way to protect themselves from the violence which is happening in their kitchen right outside their apartment in this play. The, the father keeps realizing that the same thing is happening again. The same thing is happening again, and the mother keeps going, oh, no, 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 it isn't going to happen here. And and it does, because the next door neighbor is, you see this, the next door neighbor do that, that slide from, um, oh, it's okay to do this. Well, then it's okay to do that. Well, right. then it's okay to, to lock people up from where you go, where, killing them? I mean, you know. What drew you to direct this play? You know, we're in, we're in such an awful time period where the immigrant has become the demonized other. Right. You know, the totally demonized other. What do you think is going to be the biggest challenge to overcome as a director of this show? The whole second act of this play is a birthday party oh. in which everyone is on stage. <laughs> but the hard part about that is while this party is going on, there is awful, horrible things happening off stage. Right. So to keep the balance between between the very funny family comedy and the lots of singing of opera with people being picked up and, and taken away. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think is a tremendous challenge. Yeah. What character from this show do you most identify with? Ooh, it could be Otto, the Viennese father. I love the, the character because he, he when he leaves Europe, he leaves with two things. His typewriter, because it will help him get a job, and his suitcase filled with his signed scores, signed by the likes of Puccini. You know, that is the most important thing to him. So I wonder sometimes if, if my house were to burn, if I would try to save all the photos or something, you know. Right. But, but I, also, I also love the, the Magdalena, the 90-year-old the, the, the Italian grandmother, the one who has all the best lines and the one who will just say things. Um, anymore, I sometimes think them. I try to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so more like uh, aspirational, not yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Does the audience need to bone up on their Argentinian history to enjoy no, this no, show? No, no, no. I don't think they need to bone up on their Argentinian history. I think they, you know, I think most most people are aware of governments throughout the world, whether they're in Central America or, or Latin America or Egypt or whatever, governments that end up being run by the military. All you need to know is know that there are countries like that. Right. <laughs> Can you discuss the family's relationship with art and music? The whole thing is they, they really sort of are living in this bubble, you know, the bubble of going to the opera and the ballet, that that will sort of you know, protect you from the world, and actually it won't. If this play was about your family, what artists or musicians would be referenced? Oh, good lord. <laughs> in the 50s, when my parents lived in, you know, and we lived in, in Darmstadt, there was music, but I think I was the one who discovered, who was like, can we buy a record player? Can we order music? <laughs> you know, and ended up belonging to all of those. There used to be, in addition to book clubs, there used to be record clubs. Aww. Yes, 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 where you could order records, yeah. you know, and you would get, you would be able to get stuff that you wouldn't be able to find in your regular record store. Right. 
Why should people be excited about coming to see this particular play? Because it is a drama wrapped up inside a very big, funny comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and a comedy about people's family. Mm. And, and, and people's family where that, you know, my aunt always hated me. You know, right. that kind of a family. <laughs> Yeah. Wrong, wrong music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the magic fire.